everybody. Welcome to Outpost Grave. This is your first time here. You are in the right spot. I am Jax Scott, and I am your host of this channel. And today, I am providing you information in cybersecurity, specifically active cyber defense. Now, you may know it as hacking back, and it's actually been a recent topic of discussion, especially with the new national cybersecurity strategy that came out. So I felt it was an appropriate time to have a guest on the show to be able to talk about this very topic. But what I'm excited about is the guest that's going to be on this show. He has over, gosh, he has almost nearly 30 years of experience in cybersecurity. So he's definitely been here for a while, even probably before it was called cybersecurity. But what I really love about this guest, he's been on the show quite a few times, Tom Ryan. If you don't know who he is, definitely go find him on LinkedIn and follow him. But Tom is amazing because he's got that tactical understanding, but he's also got the perspective of being a CEO of his own company. So I truly, truly value his opinion and really excited to be talking to him about this topic. So without further ado, let's get Tom on the stage. I feel like I need to change that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many people actually catch that at the end. And I'm like, that's a little weird. But hey, it was it was the free audio that you can get, I think, off of Canva. So YOLO. Welcome, Tom. I'll send you some new audio. Don't worry. <laughs> Thanks. I need it. I, I feel like all the free stuff is really lame. And I've debated on buying that membership, whatever, for. But because I don't, I don't need that much audio. So... I'm like, I'll just keep the free stuff. But yeah, if you've got some, send it over. I'm game for My it. My friend's old music sounded like it was an airwolf. An airwolf <laughs> was probably on TV when you were born. <laughs> airwolf. Hold on. I actually have to get Google airwolf. Is that like air, like the air you can breathe and then the animal wolf? Oh, yeah. yeah. It was, it was Jim thing. Michael Vincent. He was a helicopter he flew around in. Yeah, 1984. I was one year, one year old, <laughs> one year old. <laughs> I just gave everybody my age. You're welcome. <laughs> did you or did you really? Mm, true. You never know with me. I don't, you know, cyber threat intel over here. You never give anybody your actual information. That's why I use UPS addresses and Google numbers for pretty much anything. Yeah, it's a little hack. So Tom, we I know we just like, we're jumping in here. We're going to just jump right into this topic because I know we've got limited time. You've got to jump off. I've got to jump off. But I really wanted to take a few minutes and talk about this very hot topic of active cyber defense, a fancy way of saying hacking back. And I think that it's very interesting how the National Cybersecurity Strategy has come out with this as an option, but they've kind of done it I can't remember exactly how they worded it, but they didn't say that we're going to actually hack back. We're just going to take a more offensive posture towards our adversaries. So I think the best way to kick this off is to first just kind of ask you to describe your personal experience with hacking back or active cyber defense. So my experience is a lot different than yours. So when I first started in this industry back in 99 on the hacking side, it wasn't, you know, it was normal for hackers to go hacking back at the other hackers. As a matter of fact, if in the early 2000s, what they used to do is they used to go in and patch up their adversaries exploits to use their, and run their own. All right. So that was the way it was way back then. Uh, nowadays, everyone's talking about it for different reasons because attribution, that lovely word, mm. has become harder to find out who's really doing what. Because with everybody's, you know, IOCs and TTPs, they're easy to replicate. So you can always make the hack look like it's somebody else. Yeah, absolutely. I want to touch on the, I want to touch on attribution, but I don't want to go there yet because I know we're going to kind of talk deeper on that. But I want to kind of dig a little bit more on the hacking back piece because it's been a topic actually for quite a long time. When I was doing my research, I started, and, and correct me on this, I started seeing individuals talking about it like in the early 2000s. Like this was a topic. Professionals, cybersecurity professionals were already coming out talking about the use of having, hacking back in the federal space. So this isn't a new topic by any means. Individuals have already been talking about it. They've already been talking about ways that we could leverage it within the federal government. So it would in a way, make our adversaries have a second guess before they attacked us. 
have you experienced that? And do you was it has it been earlier than the twentieth? Uh, Twenty. No, it was in the early two thousands is where it started. I would say, and the reason why is so back then the conversation was should it be legal and you know because. When I first got in it, first of all, when I first got in this industry, it seemed like nobody knew what the laws were. Okay, that was problem number one. Problem number two is, you know, you get jammed up. Guess what? It's you. All right. So that was problem number one and two. And then after that, you think of hacking back. Well, hackers are notorious for spoofing. Okay. So DDoS was a big thing back then. It still is. So what happens if I DDoS the company and made it look like it was their adversary? All right. And then if they did a hack back, they hacked their adversary and disrupted business. And I think that's where the big conversation comes in is when, when you start looking at attribution, what if you're wrong? What yeah. if you take down that person and now you've disrupted their business? What's the liability behind it? And then if you got some of my other friends, you know, that work in the cyber insurance space, like, oh, we're not going to cover that or this, that, and the other thing, because then it comes back to, was this a nation state attack? Mm -hmm. And how do you prove, was it a nation state attack? Because if it was, we're not covering you. Yep. The funny part is every time somebody says we're not covering you for a nation state attack, they're hacked shortly afterwards. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I didn't know that last part. That's interesting. Huh? So let's, on this attribution piece because you've brought it twice because this is a this is one of the key areas why hacking back is such a um a unpopular opinion we'll just call it that because individuals are afraid that what if somebody hacks back and the individual that was actually attacking their organization was a small threat group but instead they made it look like they were a nation state from russia so now we're hacking back russia for example and that's very um like very uh, hyperbolic situation, but that could possibly happen. So talk about why is cyber attribution so challenging? And what are the key challenges you would see in attributing a cyber attack to say a particular actor or group, just like high level? Because I know we could talk about this topic alone for quite a long time. For days. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> that that has to be the key thing, because when you turn out, you, when you start digging deep in who who is the attacker, Okay. If they're smart enough, to, they'll hide it. You know, other times, you know, you'll have jump boxes and those jump boxes will lead you down a rabbit hole. Okay. The old days, everybody just hacked a university and it always looked like a university was hacking you because they were easy peasy. Nowadays, the ones you see getting hit are all the attorney's offices. Mm. All right. Attorneys are getting hit basically for information because information is gold. Now, where it also got a lot tricky this, well, no, it was last year was they started the uh, Ukrainian cyber army. Okay, and they're recruiting everybody to go hack Russia. Well, I was against it for particular reasons, right? Everyone's like, yeah, yeah I'm in support for it. Well, what, what are the legal um, repercussions from that? All right, so if you do it and it's tracked back to you and things go wrong, guess what? Do you have an attorney that's good enough to cover you on that? I mean, how many attorneys truly focus on that? And it's like being used in a, a pawn in a game. You know, I always tell people, don't be a pawn. You know, know who, because you're in a three-dimensional chess game. You're not going to know who you're being used for. And if you're actually attacking the right target. Okay, perfect example. Uh, when you start doing your OSINT, okay, was that the IP address now? Or was mm. that an IP address that somebody gave you? Says, here, attack this IP we believe this is Russia. And then you find out, no, that IP address is really a United States, uh, you know, black site overseas or something. Okay. Yeah. If, and, and there's so many script kiddies out there. They don't even think of these things. Everyone's like, I'm mm -hmm. a hacker. It's like, dude, you got a copy of Kali Linux and learned a couple of tools. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's scary. Having the capability of hacking back, but having it where it's not really well defined in the executive order. I haven't gotten through all of it yet, but I'm curious to see how it's going to define individuals that are allowed to hack back said organizations. And I listened to a YouTube yesterday that was an hour long discussion about the national cybersecurity strategy. And I felt it was really interesting because one of the women said, You know, we've done a great job at identifying 
quickly attribution of these threat actors, but I don't think attribution can be done quickly. Not if it's done right. It takes time. In your opinion, if you had, let's say we had a big, big magic wand, and I want to, I want like to talk about this because I want to explain to the individuals watching this how hard attribution can be. But let's just say perfect world, unlimited budget. You have all the tools that are capable, all the tools that you're aware from your professional experience. How quickly? Oh, and you had the right size team because it's all about the size of the team too. How quickly could you identify and at, uh, and put attribution to an attack? Well, that's the tricky part. So, and I'll give you a perfect example. 20... 2020 solo wins attack, mm -hmm. right? All over the news, everyone's like, oh, it's Russia, Russia, Russia. Mm -hmm. Like, was it Russia? Was it really somebody's context? Maybe they, you know, maybe they have something against them. Was it them? Oh, no, it's Russia all over the news. Mm -hmm. Well, what do we find out after the elections? Oh, China was in there and it, it, it was tagged as March 2020 is when Russia did it, right? As COVID started doing lockdowns. Well, then we find out later, no, China was in there. It was in 2019. All right. So who who is really the ones doing what? And when you start looking at where it's become a little bit more tricky, it's not like companies are the ones that are targeted nowadays. It's just now it's specific people within the company. Right. When you turn around and you look at um, LastPass. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect example. They target the developer. All right. Where that's scary is all the executives are like, oh, we have to shift left. We have to put the power in the hands of the developer. It's like, OK. And we've seen all these food bars happen. The VA, another perfect example. All right. What happened with the VA? So VA's source code got leaked and all their secrets got leaked. And this was it comes down to a person. They cloned their repo. Right. As they cloned their repo, they copied over their secrets, made them public. Right. Those secrets give you access. It's basically a token that gives you access to um, all that information. This has become the biggest hot topic all over cybersecurity. And so much so when you read the when you go deeper into the strategy, it's going to start talking about the software developers and the software that's there. Is it really the software that's the problem or is it the person that's using the software is how I've always looked at it. Because from my experience, and I've been in AppSec, wow, AppSec alone 20 years, right? We started the New York OWASP chapter 20 years ago. Oh, wow. All right. With that being said, it's like, all right, so the developer is the one writing code. Now they're putting... This is the tricky part I see nowadays. Now they're letting the developers pick the security software. <laughs> oh, that's scary. Right? Wow. So what they're doing is they're picking a software that finds the least amount of vulnerabilities mm -hmm. so they have less backlog to worry about. Right. And th this is where the whole market's getting tricky because they said blame the software. Is it blame the software or blame the people making the decisions on what software to use? And also, did you put in a training budget? because this stuff changes rapidly. I'm no spring chicken, that's obvious. But guess what? I'm still out there. <laughs> Udemy is probably my best friend and so is YouTube because I'm constantly having mm -hmm. to learn new things. All right, and it changes yeah. all the time. What I used to do in red teaming back in 2010 is nothing like what it's doing in uh, 2023, mm -hmm. so. No, it's changing quickly. And I feel like we're just going to keep speeding up as emerging and disruptive technology keeps coming out. But what's scary is we're still in the mindset of first to market, not first to being secure. And some of the discussion that was around the national cybersecurity strategy was actually securing the code. And like you mentioned, putting that response, taking the responsibility away from the first line defense, which is us, the humans, and moving it to those, the programmers or the owners of the software and doing it in the same way of do, using incentives to encourage them to secure their software. But well, I don't know. We'll see. It was an executive order. It doesn't have a lot of teeth. So we'll see where that goes. But back to hacking back, because I could go down. We need to have another episode just about the national cybersecurity strategy, which we will. But I want to, there was a gap in some of the research that I was doing. And it was around the retaliation of 
knowing about hacking backs. And there was one particular retaliation that I saw was from Israel and they went, there was a hack that occurred and then they, their retaliation was to use a missile strike against this hacker associated with Hamad, I believe it was. And so that was pretty like, that was pretty in, um, intense going from we're going to hack you and now we're going to use missile strikes to counter that hack. But there's a lot of unknown about, well, say we do start getting into this hacking back or active cyber defense space. What do you think is going to happen at that point in time if we actually started leveraging active cyber defense as part of our defensive posture within the United States for national security? What's to say we haven't? True. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I but the question is, if they're going to make, allow this for public companies, there has to be protocols in place. Correct. Okay. So who's certified to do this? Who who validates the intel? I mean, how many times have <clears throat> we've gone into investigations and all the intel is wrong? Yeah. The investigation was completely wrong. Yeah. You know, or and, and a lot of that could come down to who was chosen to do this. All right. And what I mean by that is some people. Like I said, there's bias everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Every type of bias going whatsoever. But, you know, does somebody have something against that? Maybe they don't look at it properly. Okay. Well, what's the protocols for collecting intel? What's the protocols for attribution? What's the protocols for a hackback? Yep. You know, I, I could list a whole scenario of this. You turn mm -hmm. around, you look at, you know, CrowdStrike and Mandiant, they're all over the place on this. Yeah. Well, we did this. We popped the camera on their computer to verify it was them. I'm like, beautiful. Nowadays, now <clears throat> in the world of deep fakes, guess what? Can you really prove it was them? Yeah, if that's or, the other thing. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, and then we're, we're just going down this complete rabbit hole of stuff. Um, yeah. Will we be allowed? Sure. But like I said, there's going to be certain protocols. Like uh, if you look at Homeland's critical infrastructure, all the different, th there'll be one for banking. There'll be one for, I think they'll start off focusing on a few key areas. So mm -hmm. critical infrastructure, okay, is definitely something on the power grid. Yeah. Okay, if you hit our power grid, we're coming back at you. Yeah. You hit our financial systems, which will cripple us. We're coming back at you. Mm -hmm. No, no, mm -hmm. no, there won't be a second question about mm -mm. it. All right. And it won't yeah. be, it won't be the mom and pop e-commerce Hey, I just spun up, uh, you know, my Amazon store. Yeah, you're not going to get anything for that. Or somebody hacked my Instagram account and stole my Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah there'll be no attribution for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you on on all of those points. Um, okay, so I know we're at time. I have one more question. We'll do a wrap on this, but I wanted just to ask: What is your advice for any organizations that's listening to this, that's considering using active cyber defense, or just has curiosity around it as maybe a response for their organization? What would you recommend to them to do as like a first step within that space? Talk to your lawyer. <laughs> I love that. That's a good point. Absolutely. You know, everybody <laughs> forgets the value of uh, an attorney. Um, yep. And I realized that a long time ago. So I had to do an investigation and I missed out one word. I didn't have an attorney look at the contract. I left that one word in the contract. And that was the difference of some massive scope creep. Mm. Okay. And that little word, that one little word that was missing was compressed or raw. Okay. Wow. Because it didn't say raw log files. They compressed them so well because we were charging by the log size. Yeah. <laughs> wow. The investigation took a lot longer than planned. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wealth of knowledge always. Everybody, if you're wanting to connect with Tom Ryan or Thomas Ryan, he also has a third first name, so he won't tell me what it is, but he has three first names. It's great. So give him a uh, connect with him on LinkedIn. Give him a DM there. Reach out to him. His company is Asymmetrics. Great guy. Love you. As always, Tom. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We'll have to do this again and talk about the national cybersecurity strategy. Yep. Have a great one. Okay. Bye.